Okay, I want to take you through these slides, and I'm going to go quickly because I know you can read, but I just want to hit some of the high points. These are for sections 4.1 and 4.2. It's on vector spaces and subspaces. And excuse me because I'm fighting a cold. <clears throat> so first, a vector space is any non-empty set of objects, and they're called vectors, with a defined vector addition and scalar multiplication. So this is just like we saw when we were looking at vectors or, uh, yes, uh, I guess geometric vectors in Rn. And we had those 10 properties. And we had a defined addition and a scalar multiplication for those vectors. So this is a bit more general. Now your vector space, you can define addition and multiplication, scalar multiplication, any way you want to. And V is said to be a vector space if for the vectors U, V, and W, and scalar C and D, the following axioms are true. So these axioms would be the same 10 that we had from um, back in chapter 1. So those 10 axioms that you had on your first test, those are the axioms that apply as well for vector spaces. And you'll find those again in section 4.1. So using the axioms of vector space, it can be shown that 0 times u is equal to the 0 vector. So there's no reason why we should expect that to be true, but you can actually show that. You could show that a constant or a scalar c times a zero vector is a zero vector. Again, there's no reason why we would accept that. And then you could also show that minus u is equal to minus 1 times u. So a subspace is a subset w of a vector space v if the subset is not empty, the subset is closed under addition, and the subset is closed under scalar multiplication. <coughs> so we say the subset is a subspace if it has these three properties. First, there has to be something in it. <coughs> Excuse me. And the subset is closed under addition. That means that if you add two things in that subset, you get something else in the subset. And finally, the subset is closed under scalar multiplication. Namely, if you multiply any element or vector in that subset by a scalar, the stretching or shrinking of it does not take it outside of that subset. So here's a picture. You have the V, which is the green, and the W is the yellow. Notice the W is a subset of V. So if V is a, is a vector space, then W is first a subset of V. It has a zero vector in there. It has vectors U and V. It has scalar multiples of U and V. And then it has linear combinations of U and V. So you can see here that there are certainly vectors in W, so it's not empty. It has in W all of its scalar multiplications of U and V. And then it also has in W all of the linear combinations of U and V. So it's closed under addition, it's closed under scalar multiplication, and it's non-empty. So W would be called a subspace of V. <clears throat> So if we want to, we could prove that every subspace W of V must contain the zero vector. So what are we given? We're given the set W is a subspace of V. That means it's a non-empty subset of V that's closed under addition and closed under scalar multiplication. We must show that the set W contains a zero vector because that's what we've been asked to show. So assume U is in the subspace W, and since W is, a clo is closed under scalar multiplication, it's true that minus 1 times U equals minus U is in W as well, because it's got to be closed under scalar multiplication, so you can multiply it by a minus 1. Since W is a subspace, it's closed under addition as well, so that means that U plus minus U, one of our axioms, says that equals a zero vector. And so therefore, if it's closed under addition, and close under scalar multiplication, the zero vector has to be there. So a subspace is a vector space by itself, and this implies that it too must satisfy the 10 properties of a vector space. Now if you think about it, you might ask yourself, why is non-emptiness closure under addition and closure under scalar multiplication? Good enough to ensure that the subset W of V satisfies the 10 properties. And if you think about that for a few minutes, you can figure that out on your own. So I want you to kind of think about that on your own. But non-emptiness, closure under scalar multiplication, and addition are enough to ensure that those 10 properties that we have already discussed are satisfied 
on the subset W. So show the subset of polynomials P of T equals A1T plus A0 form a subspace of PN. So PN is just all of the polynomials of nth degree. And so this is a first degree polynomial. So we want to show that this forms a subspace. So to show that something forms a subspace, again, we have to show that it is non-empty. Clearly, this is non-empty, right? You could think of an example of a um, first degree polynomial like 1 plus t. Then we have to show that if we take two polynomials of this form and add them together, you get a polynomial of that form because that would be closed under addition. And finally, we would have to show that if you take a polynomial of this form, a1t plus a0, and multiply that by a scalar, then that new polynomial is also a first degree polynomial. <clears throat> so consider adding two polynomials of this type, p of t and q of t. If you do, you can rearrange the terms in front of the t's and then arrange the constant terms and you have something of the form C1t plus C0. So it too is a first degree polynomial. Now we need to multiply by a scalar, say alpha, and we get alpha A1t plus alpha A0, excuse a typo. Multiplying that through, you get those two terms, and then you can just look at alpha A1 as C1 and alpha A as C, A0 as C0, and again, it's a polynomial of the same form. So therefore, we've shown that the subset of polynomials, P of t equals A1t plus A0, does form a subspace of Pn. <clears throat> so a definition of a basis, and the basis is an important concept for vector spaces, is that a basis for a vector space is any linearly independent set of vectors that spans the space. So a set of vectors in a vector space that are linearly independent and span the space are called a basis. That just means the set is linearly independent and any vector in the vector space is a linear combination of that linearly independent set. So let's look at an example. So the question is, is a set of vectors S equals 1 T a basis for the polynomials P1 of T equals A0 plus A1 T? So the question is, are these two vectors, one vector is 1, the other vector is t, do they form a basis for all of the polynomials of the form a0 plus a1t? So these are the first degree polynomials that we just talked about in the last example. So the first question to ask is, are the vectors 1 and t linearly independent? And clearly they are. There's nothing that you can multiply 1 by to turn it into t, and there's nothing you can multiply t by to turn it into 1. So those two vectors are clearly linearly independent. Second question to ask is, are the polynomials P1 a linear combination of S? So that question is, is there a way to combine 1 and T to make up any polynomial of the form A0 plus A1T? And so if we think about it, we could take A0 and multiply that by 1, plus A1 and multiply that by T, and then we would get all the polynomials of the form A0 plus A1T. So, it is true that the set S is linearly independent. The first question is true. And the second question is answered to be true as well because there is a way that we can multiply 1 and t by appropriate scalars to get any vector in the polynomials P1. <clears throat> so this is what a basis looks like. And you could come up with a basis, for example, for R2, right? A simple basis for R2 would be the first two columns of the 2 by 2 identity the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. And you can come up with many more because any linearly independent set of vectors that spans the space forms a, vector, uh, forms a basis for that vector space. So the column space is a type of space as well. And the column space of a matrix A is a linear combination of all the columns of A and is denoted by a col of A or sometimes we'll have this col with the parenthesis A. So again, the column space is just all the linear combinations of the columns of the matrix A. <clears throat> so here's a question that would have been a clicker question. Uh, the column space of A, matrix A, with columns A1 to AN is, is it A, a linear combination of the columns that equals to 0? Is it B, 
for all b such that b is a linear combination of the columns of a or is it c the solutions to ax equals zero so you can think about that and come up with the answer so we could be asked to show that if a is a matrix that maps rn to rm the column space of a is a subspace of rm <clears throat> that would mean that um, the column space would have to be a set of vectors in RM um, that are closed under addition, closed under scalar multiplication, and the zero vector is included. So the question is, does this, do the columns of that matrix A satisfy those conditions? So of course if A is mapping RN to RM, then it's, you can think of it like a system of equations AX equals Y, where X is in RM, and I'm sorry, X is an RN and Y is an RM. If you just think about that, the size of the matrix, um, you'll see that those have to be correct. <clears throat> and so this is the same as a vector equation that takes a linear combination of the columns of A and multiplies them by the components of the vector X, X1, X2, all the way to Xn. And then that would have to be equal to the components of Y, which are Y1, Y2 to Ym. And so we're given that A maps Rn to Rm. And we must show that the columns space of A is a subspace of Rm. So <clears throat> got to show that that's closed under addition, right? So let's say that we have two vectors that are linear combinations of those columns, Y and Z. So if we combine Y and Z, the question we need to ask ourselves is, do we get another linear combination of those columns? And we do, right? Because if we combine y and z, for each of the coefficients in front of a column, it looks like ci plus di. And so if we just replace that with one scalar, say bi, then that linear combination would look like b1a1 plus b2a2 all the way up to plus bnan, and certainly y plus z would also be in the column space of A. So it is closed under addition. What do we have to show next? It is closed under scalar multiplication. So if we take a vector in the column space of A, multiply it by a scalar, then we get something like alpha times Y is simply equal to alpha times each of the terms that were already part of the linear combination. And so if we just took all of the terms that look like alpha C sub I and call them gamma sub I, namely getting alpha times y is equal to gamma 1 a1 plus gamma 2 a2 all the way up to gamma n a n we see that multiplying by a scalar still gives you a linear combination of the columns so we've showed that that uh, column space is closed under addition it's closed under scalar multiplication and of course it's not empty because you have a matrix a that actually has some columns and so therefore we've shown that it is a subspace of rm